My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. One thing Florida is definitely known for is the animals that aren't native to the state. Over 40 different species of invasive reptile can be found here. But how did this happen? Well, there isn't only one answer. Some people try to keep certain reptiles as pets and decide they don't want to care for them anymore and release them into the wild. Many lizards have also hitched a ride to Florida by boat from neighboring islands. And hurricanes have destroyed many facilities that keep reptiles in captivity. And as we know, Florida is a subtropical environment where temperatures are ideal for reptiles year-round, so invasive species have an easy time surviving and multiplying. So I thought I'd show you guys some of the most common invasive lizards found in Florida. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch them all. For example, the brown basilisk, also known as the Jesus lizard, was much too difficult for me to catch. He's bo he sees me, he's bobbing at me. <laughs> Other lizards such as curly-tailed lizards, green iguanas, and tegus also evaded me. But there is one lizard I always catch when I visit Florida, and that's the brown anole. All right, so this right here is by far the most common lizard out here in pretty much all of Florida. This right here is the brown anole, and these guys have spread pretty much throughout the entire southeastern United States, and they're even also invasive in Southern California. I've also seen these guys invasive in Hawaii. Another thing about these anoles, just like all the other anoles, is they have a big fancy dewlap ow don't worry i'm not hurting the lizard you can see that big fancy thing sticking out that's a dewlap that's how you know this is a male females don't have them males certainly do and uh when they want to attract a female they do those big old push-ups and fan out that thing but they'll also do that display if they feel threatened and they're basically saying i'm the king of this place you better leave me alone and i've seen that firsthand multiple times anyway we're gonna let this guy go that brown anole was cool but South Florida has a much bigger anole that I need to catch. Because it probably will get away, but... So just, I guess, let me know where he is. Because I won't see him from back here. But he won't see me from back here either. Oh, he's moving a little bit. I don't know if I can reach him. Sweet. Oh my god! No biting! No biting! No biting! No biting! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> Dude, we to I totally got him. I was not expecting to catch the first one we'd see. No biting. No biting. <laughs> I, gotta, I just need to adjust my grip here. Look at that dewlap. So this is one of the invasive lizards here in South Florida I was really hoping to see. This is a Cuban night anole. This right here is one of, if not the largest species of anole in the world. Many species of anoles can change the color of their skin. And this guy is no exception because he was bright green when we first saw him and now he's super dark, which is, in my opinion, one of my favorite features of this anole. I did not know they could change colors like this. And this is obviously a male because I can see at the base of his tail where the hemipenes are stored. And I can also see that big fancy dewlap that they use to show off for the ladies so so cool i cannot believe i actually caught one of these and like chameleons they can move their eyes independently of one another and i really want to see what the bite is like but I, I really shouldn't do it should i i've heard this really hurts dude oh my god that's by far the worst bite i've ever felt and i do not want to stress out the lizard in any way so i'm gonna let it go right now before it bites down even harder there it goes. Let's take a look at my finger. That hurts. I think I learned my lesson from the night and all. From here on out, no more bites. Probably one of the most beautiful lizards I saw running around here was one I knew I would never have a shot at catching unless I got really lucky. The only way for me to do this is to execute a perfect blind catch. Dude. I did not actually think I'd catch this. <laughs> this is an African rock agama. As their name suggests, they are native to Africa. But if I'm incorrect, this is a Peter's rock agama. This is another invasive species here in South Florida. And this one is a male, and you can tell it's a male because it is beautiful. They got these orange red heads. They've got like these purplish bodies. I guess these guys can change the color of their skin just like a lot of the other lizards out here. And just like this rainbow tail, just the coolest lizard ever. It's called an agama because it's a type of agamid. And in, in case you don't know, agamids are an entire family of lizards. In fact, a bearded dragon is a type of agama. And the thing about these lizards is that they're hard to catch, 
because they don't let you get close to them before you try to catch them, like some other lizards do, like the anoles. I've seen a lot of other lizards out here that are shaped exactly like these guys, but they're they're much more, much more drab looking, just a typical brownish tan lizard. I assume that's actually this exact species, but they're just females instead of these big pretty males. Um, unfortunately, of course, it is invasive, and I assume they're here to stay. They're out here in big numbers. We're seeing them all over the place, so there's a good chance they're not going anywhere. Despite seeing how many invasive lizards have established themselves here, I still found it fun to see what I could catch, even if it was only a few lizards. So I guess I'll have to come back at some point to catch the rest. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.